At her own birthday party, my fiancé publicly announced that she was going to marry another man. The guests exchanged glances and looked at me sympathetically. Unexpectedly, I started applauding and offered a ring as a blessing. I said, May you have a long and happy marriage and many children. Chapter 1 I took off the ring from my finger and held it out. But no one accepted it. Rebecca clenched the hem of her dress, glaring at me with resentment. The boy beside her smugly wrapped his arm around her shoulder. I sighed and placed the ring on a nearby table. I casually pulled someone over. Celine, since childhood, she loved trailing behind me and Rebecca. She looked at me cluelessly and asked, What's up, Rich? I asked her, Have you been drinking? She said, No. I tossed her my car keys. I've had too much. You drive, take me home. Got it. After just a few steps, Rebecca rushed over and grabbed me. Richard, what do you mean by this? I rubbed my temples and said, Yesterday, due to an unexpected incident, we worked all night at the company. After the morning meeting, I went to the neighboring city. I only got back this afternoon and then went to get your gift. I originally just wanted to say happy birthday and leave. I glanced at my watch. It's 8 o'clock now. I have another meeting at 10 and a flight to Paris at 6 tomorrow morning. Miss, I'm too tired to play games with you. Rebecca stood there, utterly bewildered. I was genuinely exhausted. My temples felt like they were being drilled into. Without saying more, I broke free from Rebecca's grasp and left. Celine drove me to my doorstep. As I got out, I handed her the birthday gift I had prepared for Rebecca, a car key. Rebecca had wanted this car for a long time. I went through a lot of trouble to buy it. Celine asked in surprise, you're giving this to me? I nodded and said, take the key and pick it up from the dealership yourself. Thanks, bro. This time, her gratitude was heartfelt. Bro, are you breaking up with Rebecca? Yes, I'm canceling the engagement. If anyone asks, you don't need to hide it. Got it. Rebecca really overstepped this time, you should have taught her a lesson long ago. I smiled, waved her off, and went inside. After showering, I forced myself to stay awake to finish the meeting. As soon as it ended, I collapsed onto the bed without any delay. When my secretary opened the door to wake me the next morning, I was still in a daze. It felt like I hadn't slept at all. Just closed my eyes for a moment. My phone was full of unread messages and missed calls. Some were curiously asking what happened between me and Rebecca. Others were gossiping about whether I was breaking up with her. Some expressed concern about how I was doing. Most echoed Celine's sentiments that I should indeed teach Rebecca a lesson. Everyone thought I was just using this opportunity to curb her spoiled behavior and that we'd reconcile afterward. After all, in their eyes, I was hopelessly in love with Rebecca. Loving her to the point of losing all principles. Chapter 2 Rebecca was the girl I liked when my feelings first blossomed in high school. Back then, she was beautiful and flamboyant. Bright and dazzling, impossible to ignore. I was no exception. So I confessed to her, Rebecca, will you be my girlfriend? She looked at me with a hint of disdain and said, Top student, I don't like goody goodies. Because of her words, in my youthful recklessness, I did many absurd things smoking, drinking, skipping classes, clubbing. I started hanging out with Rebecca, until one day, she appeared before us, arm in arm with a refined looking boy. She said, Let me introduce my boyfriend. I suddenly realized it wasn't that she didn't like good students, she just didn't like me. Rebecca couldn't swim but was as promiscuous as they come. She had many boyfriends. Later, in our sophomore year of college, I got engaged to her, skipping the dating phase. We became fiancé and fiancé. This hit a nerve for her. She wept bitterly but said viciously, You resorted to such unscrupulous means just to be with me, don't you know I'll never like you? What did I say back then? Ah, uh, I remember. I told her, It's okay, I don't need you to like me. I just need you to marry me. From sophomore year until now, Rebecca has been my fiancé for six years. In those six years, her flirtatious behavior never stopped. She flirted with and dated different men. Sometimes, I'd help her clean up the mess. Each time, I'd only ask her one question, did you sleep with him? She'd ask, what if I did, what if I didn't? I'd tell her, if you did, you're free. But she was strange. Despite having countless admirers, she never let anyone touch her. I really didn't know what she was holding on to. Chapter 3. It was three days after I returned from Paris. During these three days, I had no contact with Rebecca. However, people in our circle frequently informed me of her whereabouts. For instance, the men she said she was going to marry had already been dumped by her. She was hanging out in bars every day with people from our circle. Even Bruno threatened to sever their father-daughter relationship. Moreover, the car I gave to Celine was bought back by her at twice the price. What surprised me even more was that when I got off the plane, I saw Rebecca. Even wearing sunglasses couldn't hide the paleness on her face. She said, Dad wants to invite you over to our place for dinner. Sorry, I replied. 
I have other things to do and can't make it. I'll personally call Director Lu to apologize. Rebecca looked at me. After a moment, she turned and left, leaving only a cold, suit yourself. I didn't mind and drove straight home. I wasn't brushing her off. I really had things to do. Grandfather had called me, asking me to come home for dinner. He said it was for dinner, but in reality, it was to receive a lecture. I heard you had a conflict with Rebecca. He was giving me an out, but I didn't accept his gesture. Grandfather, I want to break off the engagement with the Lu family. Grandfather's face darkened. Rebecca is a bit willful. Do whatever you want, but I absolutely won't agree to you breaking off the engagement. No, I want to call it off. Grandfather slammed the table. Kneel down. I obediently knelt before him. Do you know how much loss we'll suffer if we break off the engagement with the Lu family? Of course I knew. Since our engagement with the Lu family six years ago. In six years, our cooperation with them had become increasingly seamless. Not to say we share glory and loss, but separating now would at least peel off a layer of skin. But I smiled lightly and said, what if I can make up for that loss? Grandfather calmed down. He tapped his fingers lightly on the table. Then we'll talk after you've made it up. So after leaving the old house, I sent a message to my competitor. Miss Lee, do you need a husband? Chapter 4 Emily was the quintessential golden child among our generation. No matter who it was, at some point, their family would say, look at Emily, a well-rounded, wealthy beauty who excelled in every aspect. She disdained associating with a spoiled rich kids. It was only after I started taking over the family business that I had interactions with her. How should I put it? The golden child my parents always mentioned, I finally had my revenge. Last month, she and I bid on a piece of land at the same time. I won. I narrowly beat her price. This victory has kept me smug in our circle to this day. After sending the message, Emily didn't reply for a long time. Not until 11 at night did she finally respond. She sent a question mark. I excitedly bounced up, hugging my phone with a wide grin. I called her directly. President Lee, are you busy? Emily chuckled politely. What brings you to call me? President Wong. I got straight to the point. Have you considered the question I asked you earlier? Emily was silent for a moment. Then she said. Husband. I took a sharp breath. Although she spoke without emotion. That word hit me right in the heart. Did she just call me husband directly? Should I reciprocate? While I hesitated. She spoke again. Are you trying to introduce me to someone? President Wong. I was speechless, so it was a question. Good thing my mouth wasn't faster than my brain. So I said. Mainly, President Lee, you're at a marriageable age, and I happen to have a suitable candidate. I wonder if you're interested. Who? Me. Dead silence. Silence is the flute bidding farewell. Silence is the bridge of parting tonight. When I looked at my phone, the call had ended. A bit awkward. Of course, I wasn't going to give up that easily. So the next morning, I went straight to Emily's company, seeing me. Emily frowned slightly, her gaze evasive as she said. Do you need something? President Wong. Was she pretending to forget? I wasn't going to indulge her. I said directly. Opportunity knocks but once. Marrying me is a guaranteed profit with no loss. Place your order now and enjoy an ultra-value bride price package. Emily was speechless. She bit her lip and looked at me, saying. Are you serious? I said. Did you think I was joking last night? She said. No. I thought you were drunk. All right then. I looked at her sincerely and said. And now, will you consider me? Emily sized me up for a long time and said. I heard you had a falling out with Rebecca. Seems true, but if even she doesn't want you, why should I take you? She didn't refuse outright, that meant there was room to negotiate. So I said. For the project on New D Street, I'll give you a half percent discount. Emily twirled the pen in her hand and said. Three percent. Exploiting the situation, I looked at her incredulously. One percent. Three percent. One and a half. No more. Three percent. I was starting to grit my teeth. Don't push it. Two percent at most. Deal. I was speechless. Emily said. It's not about the money. I just like helping others. She's a total gold digger. Chapter 5. With things settled on Emily's side, I felt confident enough to negotiate with the Lou family. So I arranged to meet with Rebecca's father, Bruno. Unexpectedly, he brought Rebecca along. I hadn't seen her in a few days. She appeared even more despondent. Before entering the private room, Rebecca grabbed my arm. Why didn't you call me? What? Our engagement is between the two of us. If you wanted to discuss it, why didn't you talk to me? I looked at Rebecca quietly. Sometimes, I really envied her. Even now, she's still so naive. I spoke. You're mistaken. Our engagement has never been just between the two of us. Rebecca stared blankly at me, her face pale. When we went in, Chairman Lu was already seated at the head of the table. We exchanged a few pleasantries. He said kindly, I know Rebecca made you angry. I brought her today. She's an immature girl. If you have any complaints, 
Feel free to speak up. Uncle won't be biased. I smiled and said. I took the liberty of inviting you out today to discuss the marriage between me and the Liu family. Chairman Liu, I intend to dissolve this engagement. The relaxed atmosphere instantly froze. Rebecca abruptly stood up. She said word by word, I disagree. Chairman Liu's face darkened. Sit down, you brat. Rebecca met her father's gaze and sneered. What's wrong? Deciding behind my back again. You forced me into the engagement against my will, and now you're cancelling it against my will. What do I even mean to you? Chairman Liu slammed the table. Then what do you want? You disagreed when we got engaged, and you've been causing trouble for six years. How much embarrassment have you brought to both the Liu and Wang families? If you don't want to cancel the engagement, then what exactly are you doing? Rebecca was stunned for a moment, then lowered her head. Chairman Liu gave her a deep look. Leave. Rebecca left. Not only did she leave, but she also took me with her. She moved so quickly, grabbing my hand and running, as if we were eloping, that I didn't even have time to react. I was speechless. What was this all about? Rebecca. What are you doing? She said nothing. But her hand gripped my arm tightly, squeezing harder and harder. I forcefully pulled her hand away, leaving two long red marks on my arm. I hissed in pain and cursed angrily. Can't you trim your claws? It was as if Rebecca just snapped back to reality. She glanced guiltily at the marks and cautiously asked, Are you, are you okay? I felt a knot in my heart. I really didn't know what Rebecca was up to. I always thought the obstacle to breaking off the engagement would be the Lou family. Maybe Rebecca could even help me. I didn't expect she'd become the first roadblock. Rebecca, what exactly are you doing? Haven't you always wanted to cancel the engagement? Now that things are going your way, what are you fussing about? After hearing my question, Rebecca suddenly laughed, but it looked more like she was about to cry. Going my way. Does my opinion matter to any of you? Have you ever asked for my consent before making any decisions? I seem to understand what she meant. So you feel that me proposing the cancellation hurts your pride? No problem, you can propose it. I can even tell everyone in our circle that you dumped me. I smiled and continued. Actually, it doesn't have to be so troublesome. Didn't you already announce that you had someone to marry? Us breaking off the engagement now is perfectly reasonable. She said. That's over. I asked. What? Rebecca looked at me and said. I never intended to marry anyone else. I was silent for a few seconds. But you'll eventually marry someone else. This was something I suddenly realized at her birthday party. Six years, I was already tired. But Rebecca seemed to have endless energy, still causing trouble. The person at the party that day might not have been someone she truly wanted to marry. But sooner or later, she would get married. I'm not someone who likes to be passive. So I had to plan ahead and take the initiative. In the end, Rebecca and I parted on bad terms. She left with a resentful remark, Richard, this time it's not up to you. Chapter 6. Of course, it's not up to me, but it's not up to her either. This is something that needs to be negotiated. Before meeting Chairman Liu, I had already taken Emily to meet my grandfather. We had a meal together and chatted casually. We didn't say much, those who understood, understood. That night, grandfather relented. I'm old and can't manage you young people's affairs anymore. Do what you want. This time, I went directly to Chairman Liu's office. In and out in an hour. The engagement was cancelled. We agreed to announce the cancellation on our respective official websites at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Emily asked me, so what exactly did you offer the Lu family? At this moment, Emily no longer had her daytime aloofness, looking at me with curiosity. After leaving the Lu Corporation, I had called Emily, wanting to invite her to dinner. She directly told me to come to her place. I was a bit hesitant at first, then I thought, since our relationship was about to change, it wouldn't hurt to test the waters in advance. Turns out I overthought it, she was just off today and didn't want to go out. She didn't have any particular hospitality. She just had Aunt Zhang cook two prepackaged meals and opened a bottle of wine. But it was quite relaxing. I said, you're overthinking, am I someone who would swallow my pride? Emily tilted her head, looking at me as if eager to hear more. I explained, actually, the Lu family doesn't have much to hold over me. In these six years, no one was a fool. It was just mutually beneficial cooperation. There's only one thing. Clear Water Bay. The Lu family is the investor. If I break off the engagement, they'll withdraw their investment. If they withdrew, that land would be stuck in my hands, breaking my capital chain. So I urgently needed someone with funds, strength, and willingness to be a big, um, great person. I looked at her with sparkling eyes. Emily was speechless. She said, don't look at me like that. I was full of confusion. She said disdainfully, you're making me feel like a big fool. My heart skipped a beat. Could she read minds? So I said, how could that be? you're my savior. Emily sneered silently, a look of disbelief on her face. So I teased, look, to repay your life-saving grace, I'm even offering myself to you, if you don't believe me, I can offer myself anytime. Emily blushed and said, stop being inappropriate, 
Seeing that it was 9.30, Emily and I both took out our phones. I said, we're announcing the news tomorrow. Tell me, would it be a bit unkind if I shorted the lose stock when the US market opens? Emily let out a short laugh, ignoring me. I looked at her curiously. What are you doing? Seeing her phone screen, I hissed and said, you're being unkind. Emily looked up and said, right back at you. I had a bad feeling. Whose stocks did you buy? Emily said, of course, the Lu family and the Wang family. I was speechless. Chapter 7. The next day, the news of the broken engagement arrived as planned. The internet exploded, and so did the people in our circle. Groups of people called and messaged me, asking what was going on, feeling overwhelmed. I posted a few words on social media, we've broken up. Please don't disturb. I had no choice, I was too busy. There was also a group of board members to appease. Unexpectedly, Rebecca barged directly into the conference room. My assistant looked helpless. She mouthed that she couldn't stop her at all. Rebecca didn't look well. I could even see the red veins in her eyes. As if she were furious, I said, please go to my office. I'll talk to you after the meeting. Rebecca let out a cold laugh and bit her lip. Richard, you're ruthless. Truly ruthless. It was you who said you liked me. You who chased after me all these years. You who insisted on marrying me. You. Bang. I slammed a folder onto the table, cutting her off. Elise, please continue the meeting. Yes, Mr. Wong. I glanced at Rebecca and walked out of the conference room. She followed me into my office. She said, feeling embarrassed now, aren't you, Richard? You brought all this upon yourself. I never asked anything of you, never forced you, it's you who kept pushing me. I looked at Rebecca coldly. After she finished speaking, I replied, indeed, it's quite embarrassing but it's not my reputation that's tarnished, it's your Lou family's. Rebecca glared at me intensely, as if she wanted to bore holes through me. I continued. Rebecca, this isn't the first time you've trespassed into my conference room, but it will be the last. If it happens again, I'll have security escort you out. Rebecca, we're all adults here. Adults have their own set of rules. Not every place is somewhere you can come and go as you please. Rebecca seemed to have suffered a huge blow. Her face instantly turned pale. She murmured. You said you liked me. Richard, you can't do this. Seeing her like this, I felt a bit helpless. Rebecca, can you get a grip? Yes, I said I liked you, but when was that? The first time I told her I liked her was in high school. The last time I told her I liked her was also in high school. We were 17 then. Now we're 26, almost 10 years have passed. In 10 years, my interests, tastes, and style have all changed drastically. I've long forgotten what it felt like to like you 10 years ago. Besides, does the fact that I liked you even matter to you? Rebecca staggered back two steps. She said. So you haven't liked me for a long time. Yes, you haven't liked me for a long time. All these years, I've done so much, and you reacted indifferently, as if it didn't matter. Even when I kissed others, you acted like you didn't see it, and afterward, you'd warn them not to spread the photos. I kept testing your limits, but you had no boundaries with me. As long as I didn't sleep with others, it was fine. Ha. Huh. As long as I didn't sleep with them. Everyone thinks you're madly in love with me. But only I know, you don't love me at all. Rebecca shouted. Why? Why do you say you love me when you want to? And say you don't when you don't? Why do you decide to get engaged and then cancel it as you please? Richard. Who do you think you are? I was a bit stunned and blurted out. Because I have the ability to do so now. At the same time, I realized something was off. Rebecca. Don't tell me you like me. Rebecca froze on the spot. She instinctively wanted to refute but suddenly held back. Saying nothing. I felt it was somewhat absurd. Rebecca, who taught you to like someone this way? Rebecca seemed to see a glimmer of hope. I don't know how to like someone. I've been wrong all these years. I won't do this anymore. Let's not cancel the engagement. Okay. It was the first time she spoke to me in such a humble tone, but it wasn't necessary, I said. Rebecca, over the years, my criteria for choosing a partner have also changed. When I was young, I liked someone beautiful and flamboyant. But now, I like someone who can stand shoulder to shoulder with me. Someone with whom we can mutually respect and understand each other. You're not suitable. Rebecca never met my criteria for a partner. But the Lou family did. I used to think that if Rebecca wanted to fool around, so be it. As long as she didn't cause me trouble. But over the years, it's proven that she is trouble. Chapter 8. Emily called me. Your ex-fiancé is still pestering you. I chuckled and said. President Lee, your information is quite up to date. Emily sneered. It's not that I'm well informed. It's that your ex-fiancé is making too big of a scene. I felt a headache coming on. She kept referring to her as my ex-fiancé. Why did it sound a bit sour? But I wouldn't think she's jealous. Emily and I are the same kind of people. If someone were causing such a scene on her side, I wouldn't be happy either. I quickly promised. This is the only time. It won't happen again. Emily acknowledged with a hum. 
After hanging up, I told my assistant to inform the front desk that Rebecca would need an appointment if she came in the future. After a busy day, I finally appeased the board members. At the end of the workday, I unexpectedly received another call from Emily. Her tone was somewhat subtle, your front desk asked me to make an appointment. I was speechless, but that wasn't the main point, I asked. You're here. Emily didn't speak, I immediately understood, I said. Please hand the phone to the receptionist. After resolving the issue with Emily, I instructed my assistant. In the future, if Emily comes, don't stop her, let her come up directly. Emily, my assistant looked astonished, I nodded. She silently gave me a thumbs up. Emily arrived. She didn't come empty-handed. She even brought me dinner. I was indeed hungry, but seven or eight packets of ready-made meals were a bit excessive, so I tactfully expressed that I couldn't eat that much. Emily was speechless. She said, Can't I eat with you? So Emily and I rearranged a spot in the office. We ate while discussing the Clear Water Bay project. After all, she'll be holding my lifeline in the future, so I needed to be open with her. By the time we finished talking, we were full. I asked Emily, You didn't come all this way just to bring me dinner, did you? Emily raised an eyebrow. I've already met your grandfather. When are you planning to go meet my parents with me? Her sudden words startled me so much that the water I was drinking got stuck in my throat. I couldn't swallow or spit it out and ended up coughing. Emily looked at me with dissatisfaction and said, You're not thinking of burning bridges after crossing them, are you? I suppressed my cough and hurriedly said, How? How could I? Only then did Emily's mood soften. She reached out and patted my back. She snorted, pathetic. After a long while, I finally calmed down. I felt a bit helpless. I said to Emily, To be honest, I don't have successful experience interacting with elders. I shook my head and didn't say more. My parents died early. I was raised by my grandfather. As for my grandfather, he's extremely profit-oriented. He groomed me solely as an heir. So our relationship has always been based on interests. If I harmed the interests, I'd get punished. Feelings didn't matter, it was all business. But Emily's parents are different, because the one with whom I have a vested interest is Emily, not her parents. For a moment, I felt a bit melancholic. But Emily didn't mind at all. What's there to experience? Just cater to their preferences. My dad loves tea, and my mom loves beauty. I took a deep breath. When? Next weekend. All right, got it. Emily frowned at me. What's wrong? I asked. She sighed helplessly. Don't act like you're marching to your doom. My parents won't eat you. Besides, I'll help you smooth things over. Chapter 9. Being with Emily is very comfortable. She understands boundaries and knows when to advance or retreat, never making you feel offended. And since being with her, I've been making more and more money. Could you be my lucky charm? Emily laughed and said, your ability to attract wealth isn't bad either. Satisfied, I extended my hand, pleasure working with you. Emily cooperated and shook my hand, pleasure working with you. I hadn't seen Rebecca for a long time, just when I was about to forget her, she found me looking haggard. Recently, she'd been acting recklessly, her clothes were becoming more and more revealing. She stayed in bars later and later. Every day, I could see all sorts of wild nightlife on social media. I even received a few calls, they said Rebecca wouldn't leave no matter what and insisted I go. They asked me to consider our past relationship and persuade her. Most of these people were blocked by me. Gradually, things quieted down. I didn't expect her to show up at my doorstep. She stood by the door, holding a bottle of wine. She seemed to have lost all vitality, looking lifeless. I pretended not to see her and was about to open the door and go in. Rebecca grabbed my hand. I whispered sternly, Rebecca, let go. Rebecca's hand was trembling. Just as I hesitated whether to take action, she let go. I breathed a sigh of relief. As I was closing the door, Rebecca spoke. I know everything. I was stunned. What? She looked up at me, tears seeming to well up in her eyes. Even her lips were trembling. She said, my dad told me, if it weren't for you choosing to get engaged to me back then, he would have brought his illegitimate son home long ago. Rebecca raised her arm to cover her eyes. He actually has an illegitimate son, just two years younger than me, and I never knew. The day after we cancelled the engagement, he let him into the company, and I didn't know. Not long ago, he transferred 2% of the shares to him, and I still didn't know. Until yesterday, he brought him home. He said that's my brother and told me to get along with him. How is that possible? Is he crazy? He said that if it weren't for you, he wouldn't have let his daughter inherit the Lou family's assets at all. He would have brought back his illegitimate son long ago. Rebecca lowered her arm. Her eyes were red. She asked me, Richard, am I a complete failure? I said calmly, yes, a complete failure. Rebecca gave a bleak smile. You really hate me. You won't even give me a bit of comfort. She was drunk. I didn't want to reason with her. Rebecca took two steps back and leaned against the wall. She murmured, 
I always seemed to be the one left behind. When I was young, I rebelled against him, went against him. I thought that as long as I didn't do what he said, I could make him uncomfortable. I thought indulging myself was a punishment for him, but he had already given up on me. And you, Rebecca looked at me, half crying, half laughing. I was still trying to find ways to make you value me more, but you haven't liked me for a long time. I'm the only one spinning in circles while you've all moved forward. You're all moving forward, and I'm the only one left behind. You've all abandoned me. None of you want me. No one waited for me. None of you waited. She kept repeating similar words, completely immersed in her own emotions. I called her best friend. Not long after, she arrived in a sports car, looking at me. She sighed. What kind of ill-fated relationship do you two have? I smiled without saying anything. Can't you give her another chance? I shook my head. You already called it an ill-fated relationship. She gritted her teeth and angrily helped Rebecca up. I knew she'd regret it. Serves her right. Chapter 10 Rebecca's situation made me lament youth for a moment, but besides that, it didn't affect me much. On the contrary, dealing with Emily's parents was a challenge. Emily's mother loves beauty, but buying cosmetics or skincare products was definitely out of the question. So I finally chose a diamond necklace. A woman loves diamonds till the end. As for Emily's father, the gift had to be tea leaves. I had a few options and planned to have grandpa help me decide, but after grandpa looked them over, he gave me four words, pennywise, pound foolish. I was helpless, they're already expensive enough. Grandpa snorted, wait. After a while, he took out a cake of tea, take this, looking at the simple packaging, I said, are you trying to get me thrown out? Grandpa rolled his eyes, can't you recognize a treasure when you see one, this one is worth ten of what you're holding, really? Get out. In the end, I took it, after all, why not? Before I left, Grandpa reminded me, when you go to someone else's house, speak nicely, listen when elders talk don't argue. I was quite speechless. I wanted to retort. When have I ever argued? But saying that would seem like arguing. In the end, I could only shut up aggrieved. Soon, it was the weekend. I had the driver take me to pick up Emily. On the way, I was like a mute. The air in the car was suffocatingly quiet. Suddenly, Emily held my hand. What are you doing? Giving you some warmth, in case you die of fright before we get there. If I say I'm not nervous, would you believe me? She shook her head. I didn't say anything. All right, all right, maybe a little nervous. So I directly put my arm around her shoulders. I said, this is what warmth feels like. She asked, are you sure you're not taking the opportunity to take advantage of me? I sneered, aren't I supposed to? She pursed her lips and nodded. The atmosphere at the Lee family was more harmonious than I expected. Emily's father cooked. The food was delicious. Emily's mother seemed only responsible for being beautiful. But she was indeed stunning, after all. She used to be an actress. They liked my gifts very much, especially Emily's mother, who put on the necklace immediately. It's just that the direction of the conversation afterward was a bit puzzling. Emily's father asked, when are you planning to get married? Emily looked at me, when are you planning to marry me? I really wanted to scold her, was she trying to throw me under the bus? So I said, I can do it anytime, it's up to Emily, I'll follow her lead on this. Emily looked at me, I raised my eyebrows at her, she then said, my idea is to get the marriage certificate at the end of the month and hold the wedding at the end of the year. I was dumbfounded. Emily's mother was very happy, excitedly discussing wedding plans with us. I felt confused until we left. Sure enough, talking about money is easier. As I was leaving, she said seriously, let me know when you've made up your mind. Made up my mind about what? Get the marriage certificate at the end of the month, wedding at the end of the year. Emily said, in business. We need to add some insurance to our cooperation. Isn't marriage a natural thing? Lying in bed that night, I began to think about marriage. I weighed the pros and cons, analyzed gains and losses, and found myself in a dilemma. But after drinking a glass of water, I suddenly had an epiphany. Emily seemed to have given me a false proposition. I originally intended to marry her. Does it matter whether it's sooner or later? Obviously not. So I sent her a message. Emily, I've thought it over. Emily replied with a question mark. I ignored her and went straight to sleep. The next day, I told her, let's get married. Emily looked at me speechlessly and asked, are you sure? I was puzzled. Weren't we originally planning to get married? After saying that, I immediately signed a check for 200 million and handed it to her. Emily nodded, sincerely saying, impressive as always, Mr. Wong. It wasn't until years later, after our daughter was born, that Emily told me. Back then, I thought you'd give me a romantic proposal, but no, impressive as always. Mr. Wong, just handed me a check, no frills, so you agreed. Yes, making money is nothing to be ashamed of. Chapter 11. Emily and I scheduled our marriage registration for three days later. 
because on that day, Emily would officially invest in Clear Water Bay. Then, when we announce our marriage certificate, it would be a win-win. Today, someone from the Liu family was coming over to discuss our future collaboration. What I didn't expect was that the person who came was Rebecca. Surprised for two seconds, I quickly stood up to shake her hand. President Liu, pleasure to meet you. Rebecca looked at me, gripping my hand tightly for several seconds before letting go. She said, President Wang, pleasure to meet you. Without much small talk, we got straight to the point. What surprised me was that Rebecca didn't take the opportunity to propose any conditions. All the contracts were in accordance with the previous agreements. She said, rest assured, President Wang, our personal matters won't affect the collaboration between our families. I wasn't sure if Rebecca had done something behind the scenes, but it didn't matter. After all, only a fool wouldn't take advantage of a good deal. So we happily signed the contracts. President Wang, would you like to have a meal together? I nodded and said, of course. Since Rebecca decided to get involved in the company's affairs, we'd have plenty of opportunities to interact in the future. After all, it's wise to leave room for future encounters. Rebecca chose a place I often visited, though it was my first time going there with her. She ordered dishes that I mostly liked, but I pretended not to notice. I raised my glass. Thank you for your hospitality today, President Liu. I hope we have pleasant cooperation in the future. Rebecca looked at me with a bitter smile. Do we need to be so distant? Now that we're no longer engaged, can't we at least be friends? The more friends, the better. I put down my glass and said, of course we can. Rebecca was stunned. Her expression didn't look good. Do you really have no feelings for me at all? I felt a headache coming on. Having been through so many relationships, how did I not notice she was a hopeless romantic? Rebecca, since you're joining the company, focus on your work. Don't think about unnecessary things. Rebecca stared at me without blinking. If I do well, can you give me another chance? I was a bit puzzled. What chance? Rebecca said. Richard, I won't give up on you. I felt conflicted. How should I tactfully tell her that I'm about to get married? Rebecca, you can do anything you want, but not for me. I'm not responsible for someone else's life choices, she said. So all these years, you've never advised me. Whatever I wanted to do was my own business and had nothing to do with you. Once I did something that crossed your bottom line, you'd kick me away, right? Rebecca's emotions became agitated. I looked at her and said, so, are you blaming me? Rebecca's eyes showed panic. She said, that's not what I meant. I rubbed my temples. Rebecca, I've carved my own path through hard work and setbacks. I can't even be sure that the road I'm on is the right one. Why should I plan your life for you? Again, you can do anything you want, but don't involve me. I'm not responsible for your life choices. I got up to leave. Rebecca reached out to stop me. At that moment, the door of the private room was pushed open. Emily walked in. I heard from the manager that you were here. I stepped forward and put my arm around her shoulder, saying, let me introduce you. This is Emily, my wife. Ignoring Rebecca's pale face after her stunned reaction, I pulled Emily away. What? Using me? What? Aren't you? Am I? Has the law recognized it? Then can I exercise my husband's rights in advance? Emily chuckled softly and held my hand. Of course you can. Hubby. Chapter 12. It seemed I had greatly upset Rebecca. She grabbed me regardless of the occasion. Don't do this. Richard. Don't treat me like this. You're lying to me. Right. You're taking revenge on me, aren't you? Her eyes were full of pleading as she looked at me. Before I could react, Emily directly slapped her and said, Miss Lou, please have some self-respect. Rebecca covered her face. Her eyes filled with rage. She growled, get lost. Give Richard back to me. Emily smiled slightly and said, Miss Lou, you and Richard have already cancelled your engagement. She shouted, this is between Richard and me. It has nothing to do with you. With that, she quickly raised her hand to hit Emily. But just as she was about to make contact, I grabbed her hand, pulled forcefully, and pushed her to the ground. Are you okay? I asked, looking at Emily with concern. Rebecca, who had been looking at me, now had the light in her eyes extinguished. I sneered at Rebecca and said, Rebecca, this is really meaningless. Whether you're truly regretful or not, we've already cancelled our engagement. So please swallow your emotions, even if it bites, and stop bothering me. Emily and I went down to the underground parking lot. Before getting into the car, she suddenly pulled me. What's wrong? She looked at me with a smile in her eyes. President Wong, you're pretty cool. I found that I kind of like you. I raised an eyebrow. Just a little. Emily said. Then, a bit more. I lifted my hand to smooth her hair and said. Approved by President Wong. We have a partnership. We're going to get married. We might even spend a lifetime together. I don't mind developing feelings with Emily. Two days later. Emily and I got up early. We rushed to the Civil Affairs Bureau, where our assistant had already taken a number for us, shoulder to shoulder, head to head. We took a registration photo. To be honest, 
My heartbeat accelerated at that moment. We obtained our marriage certificate as quickly as possible and then hurried back to the company. Emily officially invested her funds. Then, our official website posted our partnership and marriage certificate. Mr. Wong, happy newlywed. Looking forward to our cooperation. Mrs. Wong, happy newlywed. Looking forward to our cooperation. Chapter 13. After registering our marriage, Emily and I moved in together. I bought a property very close to both our workplaces. We're very compatible. Whether in work or in life. This made my life gradually more fulfilling. Feeling triumphant. I began to expand my business territory. I wanted to dabble in any profitable industry. No way around it. After a strong alliance. One becomes bold. Gradually. Emily and I were dubbed the money-making couple. I gladly accepted this title. I hadn't followed news about Rebecca for a long time. When I heard about her again, she had already been sent abroad. This made me quite curious. Her father was indeed very disappointed in her. No matter what. She was the daughter he had loved most since childhood. His grooming of an illegitimate son wasn't because he preferred sons over daughters but because he wanted Rebecca to get back on the right path. The Liu family wasn't a feudal household. There was no throne to inherit. So there was never any talk of abandonment. Especially since Rebecca had now started doing proper work. So what exactly happened that made them send her abroad? I asked Emily. She hesitantly explained to me. She wanted to fight me to the death. And her dad found out. Fight to the death. How? Rebecca's idea was simple, steel business. She wanted to snatch it aggressively, regardless of cost or profit, but she had no say in the company. As soon as she issued the orders, her dad found out, they had a heated argument. Rebecca threatened that she wouldn't let Emily have peace. Such willfulness made her father completely disappointed. To prevent her from causing trouble, he simply sent her abroad. Why didn't you tell me? She glanced at me, tell you what, that your ex-girlfriend is still hung up on you, are you that idle? Of course I'm not idle, I'm very busy. I have to manage business and prepare for the year-end wedding. My plan was to outsource it and accept various sponsorships. When Emily heard this, she pouted and came over to kiss me. In the end, I had no choice but to reluctantly, helplessly, and unwillingly compromise. Later, that wedding was arranged by me to be very grand. Like a dream, Rebecca also came. She was dressed elaborately, as if to steal the groom, but she did nothing, sitting quietly and leaving quietly. Afterward, Emily tiptoed and kissed me. She said, Mr. Wong. Please take care of me for the rest of our lives. 